So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, are you all with us? Okay. So we're going to talk about these two ideas called standard molar volume, which sometimes we abbreviate SMV, okay? And then particle count, which it doesn't have an abbreviation. So the idea here is that we've been talking for a while about problem, what? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Good thing you said something. There you go. All right, so standard molar volume and particle count. We've been doing problems like kind of like this for a while, right? Like I'll give you, this is the old kind of problem, okay? I would give you like some number of grams of something, right? And I'll say, how many moles is that, right? We've been doing ones kind of like that for a while. Can you like shake your head or something? I know you're I'm not like talking in some other language or something, right? This time we're going to do problems very similar to this. It'll be the same math as these problems, but we're going to use something called standard molar volume and another kind called particle count, but it's going to be all the same math as we've been doing. So standard molar volume means this. Every gas has exactly one mole of particles in a 22.4 liter space. Twenty two point four liters is how many gallons? Anybody know? Twenty two point four liters. Well, a liter is a kind of similar to a quart, and there's four quarts in a gallon. So 20 quarts would be five gallons, so it's a little bit more than five gallons. What is a five-gallon object that you're familiar with? Anybody know? Those buckets, right? Those buckets that we all know that are, like, about this big, right? So this would be, this would be like, to give you a visual of how much space that is, that's about a bucket full. Sound good? Not precise by any means. It's actually not quite right, but it's, it's it gives you an idea. So the next thing I want you to think about is this right here. If I have a syringe, have, did we play with these syringes ever? Let's play with some syringes. However, there is one big giant if. You all ready? One big giant if here. Okay. Tucker, are you with us? What is the big giant if? If we don't go If we don't go where? Up or down, right? And what also happens if we heat the thing up? What happens to particles when you heat them up? They move faster. They also expand, right? So if it is at something that we call standard temperature and pressure, which we abbreviate STP. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about STP. We will do problems where it will say, what is the blah, 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 blah at STP. Okay. There are other kinds of problems that exist in the world where you would need to do some calculations because you weren't at standard temperature and pressure. And there's actual units of measure for standard temperature and pressure 
that scientists have like sort of just like settled on and called them arbitrarily. Well, this is the standard. We just called it that. For the purposes of right now, don't worry about that. Just know that we will only do problems that are at STP. Does that make sense? But I just want you to know this because you're going to see this in the problems that you do. And you need to just know that it doesn't mean you need to do anything extra. It means that because it says that, you can do just a simple thing. Cool? Sound good? All right. So that's standard molar volume. The next one is about particle count. All right, and for particle count, we have this other equivalent thing, which is that one mole equals this. What is a mole equal, by the way, in quick English that we've already learned about? A really big number. How many eggs are in a dozen? How many donuts are in a dozen? Always 12, right? How many ears of corn are in a dozen? How many students are in a dozen? Always 12, right? One mole is also a really big number. We're going to learn what that number is today. And then it's going to not matter very much a whole lot of other times. The number is this. How big is that number? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's ginormous, right? Let's write it out with all its zeros once, just so that we can know. All good? Yeah. Awesome. Just Let's put that right there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You ready? I'm just going to write it with all its zeros, so you can do this too. 602. So I'm going to move the zero 23 times, move the decimal place 23 times. So that's one time, two times. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You need to do that, but you only have to do it once. Yeah, I want you to put this in your notes. And I want you to have the right number of them in your notes. How many are after two? 21, because I moved the decimal place 23 times, but there's two motions right there. And now let's add some commas so that we can make this easier to look at. Okay. What do we call that number? So what is this? This is hundreds. Come on, you guys. Come with me here. Hundreds. Thousands, millions, billions, trillions. That's where the national debt is, right? Quadrillions. What's five? Pentillions. I think pentillions is right. Sextillions. Yeah. What? Yeah. All right, there you go. 602 sextillion. Now, let's write out the national debt just so, because that's like the largest number that we're all like kind of familiar with, right? Somebody quick, ask Siri, how big is the national debt right now? I know it's too big, but what's the actual number? <laughs> So this is hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. So 21, oh, 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 oh
So it's 30? Whatever. Does it matter? How does this number compare to this number? It's teeny tiny in comparison. Do you realize that the national debt is a small number in comparison with this? Because what happens if you double the national debt? Bad things for the economy, but what happens if you double this compared to this? Well, now you have 60 trillion instead of 30 trillion. It's like not that big of a change. Do you realize that? So this is a ginormous number, okay? It also has a name which we call it this. Avogadro's number. And the reason is because that's the scientist who came up with it. He did some really fancy science experiments and that's what he came up with. 